Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this session, we are going to see current affairs of 30th September 2023. So what are the current affairs that we are going to discuss? That will be important from both your UPSC and from other competitive examination point of view. So if you are preparing for any government examination, current affairs plays a very important role. So we are going to discuss the current affairs which are important from our examination point of view. So first we are going to see the PDF of the Hindu and we are going to see which articles are important and later on we are going to see like which subtopics that you have to focus or the perspectives that you have to focus and later on we are going to see the detailed analysis. Okay. And wherever it is possible I will be giving you the main questions and as well as prelims questions for the practice as well. Try to write answers for those questions. So first topic it is about Kaveri. Kaveri dispute. CMWA upholds panel's decision. So actually this river Kaveri is not flowing in one state. So it is flowing between the states like Tamil Nadu, Karnataka and even Puducherry. But this Kaveri dispute now why it is in news because of two states that is Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. So Karnataka is upper riparian state and from this upper state water will be flows to Tamil Nadu. So now Tamil Nadu asking that so for irrigation purpose and for the crop they need water and Tamil Nadu asking Karnataka to release water but Karnataka is not releasing water. So Karnataka says that yes there are number of cities in Karnataka they are facing water crisis. So, how can I share the water with you? Okay, so this is the idea of Karnataka and this is the thing why Tamil Nadu is asking the water. So, what happened? Tamil Nadu went to Supreme Court and filed appeal regarding this water issue. And at that time, Supreme Court said that 5000 Q6 of water should be released by Karnataka. And Karnataka denied that. So, now what happened again? Supreme Court said that I am not going to take this case and now onwards so this issue will be taken by this CWMA that is Kaveri Water Management Authority and as well as Kaveri Water Regulation Committee will going to take this issue. So this is the thing which mainly said and here we have to see this issue and whenever you are talking about any river you have to know so facts regarding that river and even which are the tributaries, right bank tributaries, left bank tributaries, etc. And here, here you have to see some facts regarding this CWRC that is Kaveri Water Regulation Committee. So these are very important, okay, from this topic point of view. And next topic is twin suicide attacks in Pakistan kills 57 people. So actually in 2013, there are a lot of attacks which happened in Pakistan. So there are threats from Afghanistan. Okay, so from Afghanistan, Pakistan is facing some security threats. So we have to see that issue. Okay, so these are two important articles from our first paper. Apart from this here, you can see one more article. That is age of consent under POKSO must remain. So here this POKSO is nothing but prevention of children from sexual offense act. So actually children, they are very much vulnerable to this sexual offense. Not only girls, even boys. Okay. So here this POKSO act which says that who are children? Children means nothing but below the years of 18 years. So they will come under this children. Okay. Children category under this POKSO. The, the concern here is the age of consent. So at which age the children or the adults and people they can give the consent for sex. Okay. So this is the issue and we have to see this topic in a great detail and if you move on so in the city page you can see one article that is CM announces 15 point winter action plan to fight against air pollution so every year every year our capital city that is Delhi which is facing this air pollution so before winter comes yes now the government of Delhi came up with this 15 point action so we have to see what is that Okay, especially what will be the problems 
faced by this delhi in winter season the first one is smog second one is poor visibility in morning time and next one is there is decreasing of air quality index and even they will facing issue of stubble burning from nearby areas like punjab and haryana so regarding the stubble burning we saw an article that there is 50% decreased stubble burning in punjab right so we have to correct this as well so this plan which includes especially several focus areas like they are focusing on controlling of stubble burning vehicular pollution open burning dust pollution etc okay so here you have to see if you are a future you are a future bureaucrat so you have to see how can you address this type of issues if you are a municipal commissioner of that so and so area okay so from that point of you have to think and you can get this article as a case study in your ethics who knows who oh, we can't predict this so psc right and you can move on to the state page so i found nothing which is important from the state page in today's paper so you can directly move on to this editorial page today so in this editorial page the first article it is about afspa so already you know that afspa which is nothing but armed forces special powers act yes manipur is burning it is like a hot spring or geyser now right so because of this here government said that we are going to extend this afspa in hilly areas for next 6 months so whenever there is afspa which is imposed means it will be giving exclusive power to the armed forces or police forces So this article says that whenever this afspa is imposed, so government should ensure that this situation which is going on in Manipur should not worsen because of extension of this afspa. Okay. Now next topic is push for more women this time in the police. So here this article says that women presentation or women participation in police. So this article says that this police, which comes under which state? Police comes under state subject. Okay, in our seventh schedule of constitution, which talks about three list: union list, state list, and concurrent list. So this police, which comes under state list. Okay, so if you want to come up with any police reforms, so it is a primary concern of state. So whenever Ministry of Home Affairs is providing any financial institution uh, financial incentives from two thousand eighteen to two thousand nineteen, so there is no modernization of police is seen. So even though the financial incentives which are given by this Ministry of Home Affairs to states, the states are not taking much action, and there is no modernization of police which is seen. Okay, so this is one important issue, and even. if you're talking about this police services so there is a very less participation of women is seen so this is also one important issue especially women representation in the state it's also varying that is from one state to another state women's participation is also differing for example in bihar 35 percentage of reservation for women is given okay but it is not the same case in the other states also so this is the thing which mainly said So, as a future bureaucrat, you have to see what can be the measures taken to improve participation of women in this police services, and even you have to see what are the challenges women are facing in this police services. Okay, so why women are not much interested to enter into this police services? So, first important reason here is because of patriarchal society. and this duty is 24 by 7 so it is also one important reason and even women are facing sexual assaults in this police services and not only that there is no safety for women in this police services and you can write some case studies as well so because of this challenges women participation is less so that 
if you are knowing the challenges you can easily write the measures like what can be the steps taken by the government to improve women's participation and we can connect this article with one more article that is women reservation bill so women's participation politics So actually this women's reservation will which says that 33% of reservation should be given for women in both state legislative assembly and as well as in Lok Sabha. So this bill has been passed in both houses Lok Sabha and Radha Sabha in the special session and even now president gave assent. So it is going to become an act now. Okay so these are the some important things that you have to remember. And now let us move on. There are two more articles which are important from our examination point of view. So first one here is troubled water. So what happened? So in South China Sea, there are three islands which are always in dispute. It's Parcel Island, Spartley Island and Scarborough Island. So what happened? So if you see this is South China Sea, here we have the Scarborough Island. So around the Scarborough Island, China came up with this uh, fencing. That fencing had been cut down by Philippines. So because of this, this is the news. And you have to know some facts regarding this Scarborough Island. So what is the importance of this South China Sea? Okay, so it is very important from your means. And next topic is Global Dispute Settlement System, India and Appellate Review. So this article which is talking about WTO. WTO is nothing but World Trade Organization. So, World Trade Organization it wants to promote peaceful trade between the countries. So, because of this, it came up with this dispute resolution mechanism. So, if there are any dispute between the countries, they can file the case in this dispute resolution and they can dissolve their issues, right? But the problem here is US which is not allowing for the appointment process from 2019 onwards. So, this is an issue and we have to see. What is this all about regarding this dispute resolution mechanism or appellate tribunal of this WTO? And this topic is important from your mains and also from your prelims point of view. And now let us move on. So there is no need of reading this ground zero. Yeah, here you can see one article that is President Grants Ascent to Women Reservation Bill. So, it will be now 106 Constitutional Amendment Act and you have to remember that. Okay, so this is 106 Constitutional Amendment Act. So, which proposed constitutional amendments they are to be passed by the government. Okay, so this is the thing and this bill which is talking about 33 percentage or one third reservation for women in Lok Sabha and as well as state legislative assembly. So, now let us see the detailed analysis of these topics that we discussed till now and later on once again we will be come back to this newspaper. So first topic it is about suicide attack in Pakistan and it kills about 57 people. So at least 57 people including 7 children they were killed in two suicide bomb attacks which happened in Pakistan. So Pakistan is Islamic country right. So on Friday, they will be having the special prayers in mosque. So here, suiciders, they thought that this is the right time to kill maximum people and they came up with the suicide attacks. So if you see the details, it says that in Balochistan's Mastong district, a blast took place near Madina Mosque on Al Falal Road. And here, especially devotees, they gathered to this mosque to celebrate birthday of prophet prophet muhammad so to celebrate the birthday of this prophet muhammad his people they came up here and the attack which happened and this explosion occurred as a procession was being carried out in connection with eid milad nabi celebrations and the second blast which occurred during this uh, juma prayer juma prayer is a special prayer which will be offering on friday okay so on this Juma prayers in this Hongku district, yes, the bomb blast happened and there are 30 to 40 people, they were died. And next topic it is about Kaveri dispute, okay. 
So what is this Kaveri Water Management Authority says about this decision? So if you see this Kaveri Water Management Authority upheld the decision of Kaveri Water Regulation Committee to release 3000 cubic feet per second that is Q6 to this Tamil Nadu till October 15th. So actually earlier as I said Supreme Court said that here Karnataka to release water to Tamil Nadu that is 5000 Q6 of water and now it accepted that that this authority said that here this uh, Kaveri Water Regulation Committee decided to release 3000 Q6 of water. So why Supreme Court said that we are not going to take this case once again and this will be now taken by this Kaveri Water Management Authority and as well as Kaveri Water Regulation Committee. And here now this committee said that release of 3000 Q6 of water and said and it said okay by this management authority. Okay, so this is the issue and this is the background. And now let us see some details regarding this topic. So first let us try to see this map. So here this Kaveri river has been originated and it is moving between these two states. So this Karnataka will be called as upper riparian state and it is lower riparian state. So always this lower riparian states will be depend upon this upper riparian states for the water release. And this is the Kaveri Delta region. It is very much helpful for the food production. So what is the issue here? Supreme Court refused to intervene either in the favor of Karnataka or Tamil Nadu in this Kaveri water dispute. So because of this it said that so here CWRC and CWMA they will be taking this issue and they will be dealing with this water sharing between Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. So because of this CWR said that Karnataka release need to release this 3000 Q6 of water and it is upheld by this authority. That means it is said by, it is said okay by this authority. So now let us see some facts regarding this Kaveri river. So Kaveri is a state's largest river and it is flowing from this Tala Kaveri in the Brahmagiri hills of Karnataka's western Ghats. So where it is originated, originated in this Brahmagiri hills of Western Ghats and it is also known as Dakshina Ganga or Ganges of the South and it is one of the India's holiest rivers as well and the source of this Kaveri river is a popular pilgrimage and tourist destination in Kurk. So if you are talking about this tributaries, so which are the tributaries of this Kaveri? So first one is Harangi, Hemavati and as well as Lakshman Tirda and next one is Kabini and as well as Tirumakudal, uh, sorry, so this Kaveri river which originates in Kerala and it flows its words and joins this Kaveri and Harangi, Hemavati, they originate in the western Ghats. And this one is Shimsha, Arkavati, Suvarnavati, okay, and Bhavani, Lokpavani, Noyal, Amravati, so these are the other important tributaries. So here you have to remember these tributaries like Hemavati, Amravati, Arkavati, Simsha, Kabini, Suvarnati and Bhavani. So these will be very important tributaries of this river Kaveri. So let us see some facts regarding this Kaveri Water Regulation Committee. So here this Kaveri Water Regulation Committee was formed to implement and to monitor this award. Okay. This committee is responsible for releasing of this water from this Karnataka's reservoirs so that the enough amount of water which is getting by Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Puducherry. So I want to give you one main question. The question here is constitutional mechanisms for resolving this interstate water disputes. So we have article 262 talks about this interstate water disputes, right? So constitutional mechanism is there to resolve this interstate water disputes. So have been ineffective in addressing the resolving of issues now. So is a failure of the result of structural or process flaws or both. So why this constant provisions even though which are present they are not resolving this, is, this, this, this kind of disputes between the states. So this is a question. So try to answer this question. 
So here you have to write about what are the negatives of this article 262 of our Indian Constitution. Is that clear? And next topic is about WT, which is Global Dispute Settlement, India and Appellate Review. So what is WTO? WTO is nothing but World Trade Organization. So it is a member driven or consensus based intergovernmental organization. So this WTO which is regulating and is trying to facilitate the international trade between the nations. So why international trade is important now? So now we are in globalized era. That means one country is dependent on another country, right? So because of this, whenever one country is dependent upon another country for its trade, like to get the imports and as well as exports, yes, we need to have a an hand or organization so which will ensure the proper free and fair trade between the countries. So that we we came up with this WTO. And it is the world's largest international economic organization. So here headquarters located in Geneva. So there are 164 member states representing about 98 percentage of global trade and global GDP. So you can understand how big this organization is. And it officially began with operations from 1995 onwards in accordance with 1994 Marrakesh Agreement. So this is very important. Okay. And if you see some facts regarding this dispute settlement body of this WTO, so WTO established in 1995, so it is a successor of this GATS and the dispute settlement, it is a critical component of global trade because, so whenever the trade is happening between the two countries, obviously there might be some disputes which arises between the countries. Yes, resolving of this dispute is very important such that we can ensure free and fair trade. So if the disputes are not resolved means we can't ensure the free and free trade, right? So for that, we came up with this dispute settlement system and it's one of the critical component of this regime. So this dispute settlement system which will provide a mechanism for resolving the disputes among WTO member countries and we are focusing on even trade related issues and we are ensuring that trade rules should be followed, okay, etc. And this WTO's dispute settlement mechanism, which faces some challenges since December 2019, because it has become non-functional from 2019. Why US is stopping the appointment of the people or the appointment of the members of this committee? So because of this, it became non-functional since 2019. So why we need to come up with a revival of that dispute settlement? So if you understand the significance or importance, then only you can connect that. Yes, we need this dispute resolution body. So first one is if you want to ensure this rules based trade. Yes, we need this dis dispute resolution body. So for the promotion of this rules based international trading system, it is one of the important and primary objective of this WTO dispute settlement mechanism. So for that, if you want to maintain the proper trade, if you want to follow the rules and agreements, Yes, we need to have this dispute resolution mechanism and even it is very much helpful for maintaining of stability in trade and predictability and fairness in global trade system and even it also prevents the countries from taking unilateral actions as well as well that could disrupt international trade and even that will helps to maintain a level of order and discipline in the trade system. So for all these things, so if you want to maintain discipline in the trading system, if you want to maintain rules and order in this trading system, yes, we need this dispute resolution mechanism. That means if there is any dispute is there, so if you are not resolving that dispute, that will lead to the disruption of trade, correct? And next important one here is for the predictability as well. So for the predictivity, predictability, a WTO's dispute settlement system enhances predictability for member countries and even so this body which will assure the trade disputes will be resolved impartially. So based on the rules and based on legal principles, so what are the issues out there that issues can be resolved carefully. And the predictability is vital for business and investors so that it can reduce uncertainty and even it can reduce the risk in the international trade. So for that, yes, we need this body. And next one is we can also avoid trade wars. Okay. 
so the essential function of this WTO dispute dispute resolution mechanism is to prevent the trade wars okay and the trade related conflicts because it will provide a platform to resolve the disputes peacefully through legal channels and even it will offers an alternative to unilateral actions that's imposing tariffs and tariff barriers so if you're talking about the tariffs and tariff barriers so how they are imp uh, impacting the trade you have to know that so whenever there is increasing of trade barriers what happened there will be decreasing of imports to that country right so in this way here we can see there will be unfair trade for example this is country one so which is coming up with lot of imports okay imports to other countries so for example it is importing to the country two but in this country too there is increasing of trade barriers so whenever these trade barriers are increased by this country too then the imports of this country will be decreased to this country okay so that what happens so it will be not ensuring the free trade because this country wants to export more but this country which is not importing right so because of this it will be altering the trade so if you want to ensure the free trade between these two countries so this country can go and file a case regarding this country regarding this trade barriers and based on the rules and the law so this issue will be solved impartially by this dispute settlement body so because of this is very important and this mechanism will also reduce the likelihood of escalating trade tensions between the countries so if there is increasing of trade tensions that will affect the global economy at large okay so because of this we need this type of body and this one is so this dispute settlement mechanism which also provides a level playing field for example this WTO's dispute settlement mechanism which ensures that even smaller and less powerful countries they also having the opportunity to seek the resolution so it is not only allowing only the developed countries even the small countries they have opportunity to file their cases in this dispute resolution body okay so this is about this thing so because of this yes we need to go for revival of this dispute resolution body and one more main question i want to give here so if you want you can take the screenshot or if you want you can make a note of the question so what is the significance of WTO dispute settlement system in international trade I discussed and here you have to see what are the key challenges it faces today that is nothing but appointment okay process which is stalled by USA since 2019 so because of this it is unfunctional today or non-functional today and this one is how can this WTO and its member countries chart a way forward to address these challenges to ensure fair global trade dispute resolution process so it is a very easy question try to write answer for this question and now let us move on and next topic is about troubled waters so this article which is talking about china philippines issue in this south china sea region so in the South China Sea region, there are three islands always in the dispute and always in the news. That is Parcel Islands, Spartly Islands and Scarborough Islands. So this topic is about the Scarborough Islands and this is the issue between China and Philippines. So we are going to see in detail regarding each and every point that is important from UPSC point of view now. So please be focused. And this topic is important from your international relations which comes under your GS paper too. So actually again the fresh dispute which broke out between China and Philippines regarding the Scarborough Islands. Okay, in the South China Sea. So China came with the fencing, fencing rope and that rope which is broken by the Philippines. So this, this thing we discussed in our yesterday's lecture right so if you're talking about the Scarborough Islands so it is a triangle shaped atoll so atoll is nothing but if you are reading coral reefs so we have three types of coral reefs 
so first one is barrier reef next one is fringing reef and next one is a tall so what is the difference so for example there is island here so on this island so whenever these corals are present which is touching the coast that is called as barrier reef and if it is island so for some distance we have this uh, bar uh, this uh, coral means fringing reef so if there is any island around this island so there is a presence of this coral earlier but what happened there is diminishing of this island and only the round part which is seen now so this round part of corals is called as atoll so this carbog is also an atoll okay so it is approximately 120 nautical miles west to the philippines island of luzon so here according to unclos united nation convention of law of seas it says that so if there is territory so till 200 nautical miles it comes under exclusive economic zone of that so and so country's jurisdiction so it is 120 nautical miles here this philippine says that this carbog island which is present which is belonging to this philippines so it lies within the philippines exclusive economic zone however this carbog island is claimed by china through disputed nine dash line so as it comes under this territorial jurisdiction of this philippines but china is claiming entirely this island because it came up with this nine dash line so this island which is very much rich in this fishing and it is believed to be rich in oil and gas reserves also so because of this now the dispute which is going on because to exploit this fisher this fishers and as well as oil and gas in this carbog island so now let us see the location of this carbog island where exactly it is located so what is this nine dashed line so this is china here so here we have philippines right so this is the south china sea part so this red color dots which came up by china it says that this is nine dash line and this is comes under entirely the jurisdiction of china and here we have this island which are disputed here parcel scarborough and as well as partly island is that clear now let us see some facts regarding the south china sea south china sea it is a marginal sea which is located in the western pacific ocean part and it is typically enclosed by land and it is connected to large ocean or sea and south china sea is connected by taiwan strait with this east china sea and luzon strait by philippines sea and these straits are nothing but these are the narrow water channels which is connecting these two bigger water bodies and the bordering states and territories includes china and taiwan philippines malaysia brunei indonesia singapore and vietnam so these are the countries which are sharing boundary with the south china sea with almost all these countries china which is having the dispute and this one is gulf of thailand and gulf of tonkin they are also the part of the south china sea so this is very very important point for your examination and now let us see what is the significance of this sea so why there is a dispute should always seen in the south china sea so why the countries they want to gain their jurisdiction over the south china sea so the first important reason because of the strategic location so it is located in the cross roads of major maritime routes for example pacific ocean to indian ocean so because of this to monopolize the global trade in the future yes the countries they want to increase their influence in this region and according to unctad says that one third of global shipping which passes through this south china sea so because of this it is very important for the global trade and this one is for the natural resources also because it is having abundant resources like fishes and gas reserves oil reserves etc so this uh, fishes which will be very much helpful for ensuring of livelihood of the people and this one is territorial disputes the south china sea is a subject of territorial dispute which is seen between several countries for example we have china vietnam philippines malaysia brunei and indonesia so these disputes which also led to the tensions 
and even they are the reason for the rising of instability in this region as well so this is about this topic and now let us see next one that is about aspa so i discussed this topic in yesterday's lecture again once again let us see this topic so what is this aspa that is armed forces special powers act so when we came up with this act in year 1958 so what is this act is about this act will be giving some special powers to the members of armed forces in disturbed areas okay so the powers will be given to army and as well as central armed police forces the crpf and as well as the army so here what are the powers given to kill anyone acting in contravention of the law and to arrest the people and search without any warrant and to prohibit a gathering of five or more in this areas in this disturbed areas so these three points are very important from your prelims and who can give the notification so under section 3 of this afspa central government or the governor of the state or administrator of union territory can declare whole part of the state or any state any part whole or any part of the state as a disturbed area so this point is also very important for your prelims so power is given for governor and as well as administrators of unities and even the central government and if you some more things here so the extension now happened in this manipur so there is extension of this aaf spot to this hilly areas for next 6 months so it implies that this disturbed area status under this aaf spot will persist in in all hilly districts which are primarily housed for this tribal communities so actually what is happened in manipur so there is issue between two communities meetis and kookis so meetis will be living in valley areas and kookis will be living in this hilly areas so now there is extension of this afspa in this hilly areas for the next 6 months and in contrast the valley districts they have seen a gradual withdrawal of this afspa since 2022 because here the government said that there is significant improvement of condition in this valley areas but now it had been extended to hilly areas so it is one cause of concern and this move to extend this afspa has come amidst highlight in the security concerns in manipur okay and if you move on it also says that these insurgent factions that is tribal groups they are predominantly operating from myanmar and even advocating that might manipur secession from india and national investigation agency initiated a case to probe transnational conspiracy by these groups to wage a war against the government so actually now here ni which is investigating a probe that this manipur want to want to set free actually okay it want to come out of india so because of this this type of events are going on so this is a probe which is investigating by this national investigation agency now and now here this manipur which also witnessed that increasing of ethnic violence between this majority of meeti community and as well as tribal community that is kooki community and because of this conflict between this uh, kookis and as well as uh, meetis it also resulted in highest number of civilian casualties since 1999 so because of this there is extension of this afspa so this article says that whenever we are coming up with extension of this afspa So it should not deteriorate the present war which is going on in going on in this Manipur. So this is the idea of this article. And next topic it is about physical deficit hits thirty six percentage of financial year target in twenty in August. So here you have to know about what is this physical deficit. So this is very very important concept from your economy point of view. So now let us see this physical deficit. So here the physical deficit is nothing but the difference between government's total expenditure and its total revenue. So what are the revenue it is getting? So this revenue is less compared to that of expenditure. Then this condition is called as physical deficit. Deficit means nothing but something shortfall. So whatever money I am getting, so I am spending more than that. So that is called as physical deficit. so it is an indicator of the extent to which government must borrow in order to finance operations so based on this financial deficit or physical deficit 
I can borrow money from my friends or my family etc. Okay, so that is the one important thing or the need of this physical deficit we can understand. And this one is high and low physical deficit. A physical deficit can lead to inflation and devaluation of currency and increase in the debt burden. So what happens whenever there is a physical deficit, so I have to go to another country to borrow. So because of this that will lead to inflation in our country and as well as that will lead to devaluation of our country and as well as debt will be also increased. So whenever there is decreasing of this physical deficit means it is one of the positive sign of physical discipline and it can show that our economy is healthy. Okay, so this is about this physical deficit and these are very important articles that appear in our today's newspaper, okay, from our examination point of view. And now I want to introduce this course that is daily mains answering course for beginners and as well as students who gave your attempts. So this course it is going to be started from October 9th, new batch is going to be started from October 9th. So this is one of the beneficial course that you can't see anywhere throughout our country. So here we are going to cover entire your GS within one year. The course it is for one year. So in this course daily we are providing you one question and on Sundays you will be having case study or your essay. So we are going to give you next one year plan what you have to study along with the micro listing of topics. So based on that, based on that we are going to give you daily one question and you have to write your answer and you have to send your answer so that evaluation will be done. And apart from that evaluation we are also going to provide you the modal answer for that so and so question. And next one here is there will be doubt live clearing sessions and we are also going to have one to one mentorship there. And on every Sunday you can clear your doubts regarding this GS. And one more thing here is, so the medium is only in English. And most of the questions in this UPSC 2023 means you are directly from our mains answering practice course itself. And you are also going to provide you the current affairs based questions from your GS2 and as well as GS3. So this will be also an advantage you will be getting. And one more thing here is, so this course is useful for beginners and as well as students who uh, are facing the problem regarding this answering skills. So this evaluation will be in the manner how you can, uh, how the papers will be collected in your school days. So we'll be giving you the detailed feedback like, so what you wrote, so what might be written and uh, whether you address to the demand of the question or not. So whether you address the keyword which is given the question or not. So how can you improve the brighter like if you can add the map or if you can add the diagram or any data. So we will be giving you the detailed feedback so that you can improve your answer writing skills. Okay. So join this course and the cost of this course is 8200. Even if you can't pay this amount in one go you can pay in two installments. So if you want if you have any doubts and if you want to join this course so please call me on this number. 8074765513. So always I will be saying that you can invest in money so that you can earn the money in the future. But if you are investing in time, so it will be make if it will it will be lead to the losing of the time. Time cannot be bring back. Okay, so don't waste your time. So try to join this course so that you can enhance your answering skills. Okay, so now let us move back to our Hindu paper. In this new space, there is nothing much important. So most of the articles are political articles. So here you can see one article which is important from our examination point of view. That is electoral bonds to go on sale from October 4th. So here you have to see what is electoral bonds. So what are the issues regarding this electoral bonds and what are the advantages. So whether this electoral bonds are ensuring the accountability in this political party funding or not. And if you move on in economy page or in this business page, there is one article that is Eurozone inflation slows to two year low. So please let me know what is the meaning of this Eurozone in the comment box. And this one is fiscal deficit. I discuss this topic. So these are the important articles that appear in our today's Hindu newspaper. And now I want to show one thing which is interesting. 
So if you want to get the notes, so if you want to get the notes of the class, so you can join the telegram channel. Okay, so this is our telegram channel, this Rathor Science classes and the link of this telegram channel is given in the description box. So if you want to get the notes, you can join this channel so that whenever we are posting the video in YouTube, the update will be given here and even the notes will be posted here. Okay. And one more thing is, this is our YouTube channel. So here, please do subscribe to this Rathor Science Academy and you can hit the bell icon so that whenever we are posting any video, so you will be getting notification so that you will be not missing any video. And one more thing is, this is our website. So if you go to Google and if you are typing this Rathor Science Academy, then this is the home page that will be available. So first of all, you have to register with our website. So if you are entering to the website first time so you have to click on do not have account and first you have to register and after registering again it will be directed to this login page and here you can give your mail id and password and you can log in so after login if you are clicking on this course list so you can see this courses that you are offering in rathod is so if you are weak in a single subject you can take the single subject subscription also so before taking subscription if you want to watch the demo videos you can click on this play course so if you are playing the course then three videos will be open so those three videos you can watch without any fee okay so if you like that then only you can go for buy now and if you want to take entire foundation course the cost of this foundation course is 45,000 rupees and you can click on here buy now so that the payment you can do here okay and one more thing is this is our daily main translating course that is going to be started on October 9th. Admissions are going on and you can join this course now. And apart from this, by this October 15th, we are coming up with prelims booster course. So that will be exclusively focusing on the prelims. So we are going to focus on static syllabus and as well as uh, this uh, current affairs and you will be having the classes and daily test and prelims series. everything will be there. So you can join that prelims booster course that is going to be started by October 15th. Okay, so this is about this website and these are the courses that we are offering in Rathor IS. So trying to join these courses that will be exclusively beneficial and the price is also affordable. So by this I'm concluding. So if you really like this video, hit the like button and try to share this video to your friends and groups. And one more thing here is if you are new to this Rathor IS Academy, please do subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching.